Hello dear students, welcome to another uh, video in Schools of Linguistics. Today we'll be talking about the break school. The most characteristic feature of the break school approach is its combination of structuralism with functionalism. So basically break school combines two schools of linguistics. Okay, structuralism and functionalism. This is very important note that you need to keep in mind. The second thing is concerning functionalism here in the sense that uh, an appreciation imp as implying, okay, is as understood as implying an appreciation of the diversity of functions fulfilled by language, okay? So break school takes uh, the claim of functionalism that, uh, that, that the functions fulfilled by language, that language uh, function is determined by the theoretical for example, recognition that the structure of language uh, is determined by their characteristic functions. The functions or the language is determined by the structures of language, of course, what they perform in society. That is the, the function of language or the function of, of structures of language determine the meaning of or determine the importance of language. Okay, so if we take this meaning from functionalism, then um, this manifests itself in many of the more secular tenets of break school. So basically, break school takes this meaning or this sense of functionalism and it applies it in its its tenets and principles. The break school was best known for its work on phonology. For example, Trubitskoy defined phonemes as a set of distinctive features. Okay. For example, in English, B differs from P in the same way that D differs from T and G from K. That is, these sounds in English, they, they differ in terms of voicing. So, break school was uh, best known for this work. So, phonology in break school came up with these uh, phonemes and defined phonemes in terms of distinctive features. Each phoneme then is composed of a number of articulatory features and is distinguished by the presence or absence of at least one feature from every other phoneme in that in the in the language. So basically, they classified phonemes in terms of of their feature, in terms of distinctive features. That is the presence or absence of of other features. Each phoneme has its own features. Okay, and differs from other phonemes in in the absence or the presence of those of those features. Uh, the notion of markedness also was first developed in break school phonology, but was subsequently extended to morphology and syntax. When two phonemes are dis distinguished by the presence or absence of a single distinctive feature, one of them okay, is said to be marked, and the other, um, the other unmarked for the feature in question. So basically, when we talk about uh, markedness, okay, here we have an example. What what is meant by markedness in phonology? So, for example, b is marked and p and marked with respect to voicing. So when we talk about voicing, b is voiced. That is, b is marked for voiced and p is unmarked for voice voicing. Okay. So this this markedness was first developed in prep school. Okay, it's a very important notion in phonology and also extended to other fields of, of language. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and catch you guys in the next video.